we were given that RV. And we've already got a family that is gonna be staying in it that they got their whole house destroyed from the hurricane. So we have Operation RV kicking in. We have to first get this thing fired up, make sure it runs and drives. Obviously, it needs to be cleaned quite a bit. And we have to drive it about 150 miles from here in Fort Lauderdale all the way across to Fort Myers. And maybe stock the shelves to help this family. They literally just got the clothes off of their back and their house, the whole community got destroyed. And it's got a pretty interesting owner that goes with it. Well, former owner, cause he's giving the, the RV to us at Wings of Compassion to use. But I'll, I'll let him explain that more. <laughs> Hello, sir. Hello, Jimmy. Welcome to Fort Lauderdale. How you doing? Fort Lauderdale. All right. So this, I've got, you've got to hear him say his name. What's your name? Louis Vega. Louis Vega. Anybody guess where he's from? Yeah, that, that was pretty easy. New Jersey. New York. Like <laughs> Jersey. Jersey. Close enough. He's like, I'm a Jersey guy. I'm a Jersey guy. I got a, uh, an email from him saying, hey, I love your Wings of Compassion stuff. I love what you're doing to serving the military families. I want to help. I've got a really cool RV. Needs a little bit of loving to cruise it back up to back to where it was. This was your RV, right? Yeah, we purchased it uh, about 15 years ago. My wife's favorite thing to do was to go to Disney. And her license plate actually says Disney on it, and it's a Disney license plate. Sure. So she kind of likes it a little bit. At the time, when you went there for birthdays and everything, we would put the awning out, and then you'd come back after a day in the Magic Kingdom, and they would have all balloons, and they would have autographs wow, and everything like that. Cool. So going in the RV was like really a really cool wow. thing. You know, we decided we wanted to donate the RV to the, you know, the service men and women of this country. They can't get thanked enough as former law enforcement and everything like that. I know what it's like to be out of the service and, and things like that. And the saying is, is when you're in the military or you're in the police, you're a brother. And then once you get out, you take that first R out and you become a bother. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to donate this RV to the men and women of the armed forces uh, so that they can get some enjoyment and everything like that. Maybe when they're, you know, you have your 310, hopefully uh, up in the air. Hey, and the silver and, bullets and, and, fly. And, yeah. the silver bullets <laughs> exactly. fly. Exactly, well, and then if they come and they need the RV to stay in while you're doing something with them, maybe that would be a good place for them. With all the poor people in uh, Fort Myers with the hurricane and everything like that, anything that can help anybody, I, I want her to have a good life. She doesn't look great right now, but she's in really good running condition. The interior is really, really nice. By, she just by, needs some loving. By running condition, he means it doesn't run right now, and that's what we got to figure well, out. Well, if you have enough people pushing in the right spots, <laughs> we can get run. her, you know, at least two, two, three pushing. miles an hour. What was your job, and where were you at doing law enforcement? I was a police officer in Jersey City from 1993 to 2018. And I was blessed to work with a bunch of really, really good people. My partner was shot and killed in 2009 mm -hmm. in a tactical entry. I was on vacation actually with the RV. I was with my family during the day and woke up in the morning. I had 50 something messages. One of the guys that I work with, John Warlikowski, I called him and he said that they had done a tactical entry on a gentleman that had murdered some people and did some robberies and shot people uh, during a gas station robbery. And my partner during that tactical entry was was shot in the neck and two other officers were injured also. Uh, he was declared brain dead. His name was Mark Anthony DiNardo, one of the greatest men I've ever known. But I wish, like I said, all the men and women in the police, fire, EMS, military, all I do is I wish them well and I wish them health and happiness. So hopefully this will be able to help them a little bit and help you help them. That's right. Well, and I appreciate that. Uh, thank you for sharing. Really. I appreciate it. Thanks so much. So I see you got some keys there. Yes, this is the key. She needs a little bit of loving, but really? she's, she yeah. runs really, really well. And uh, it'll, it'll buff out. It'll, it'll be, yeah. You get your son to do a little bit of compound and wax, get behind from the camera and everything like that. And we'll have a couple of lemonades and you can do the work. <laughs> Finally earn your keep around here. Yeah, he says that you charge him too much money. You bought it 15 years ago. About that, yeah, 15, About 16 roughly. years ago, yeah. And how long ago did you stop using it? Well, I retired in 2018. 
and the day I retired was the day I left. She's been sitting here for about the last four years okay. since retired. We drove it from Jersey to here, and then unfortunately she needs some loving now, so time to pass her off All right. and, and get her to somebody that can but enjoy. Oh. Here. Well, just to give you an idea, the driver's seat, when, <laughs> when the slide out, this is the slide out here, when the slide out is out, this lays completely down, so I've fallen asleep there. This lays completely down. This turns into a bed. This turns into a bed. Holy crap. This turns into a bed. And then we have the other bedroom in the back here. This is where my wife and I used to have the privilege of being in. So she's a beautiful RV, the bathroom's there. Then the shower's behind you. Nice sink here, has a, almost a full-size refrigerator, has a microwave with a convection oven, and then plenty of storage. I'm surprised it doesn't stink in here. The slide out's about 20 feet long from this post to that post, it goes all the way out, mm. and it turns into a giant living room. Yeah, I was expecting more of a, just that mold smell, but it just smells a little bit musty, like it no, hasn't no. been aired out. That's yeah, like I said, good. she just needs to be uh, a little bit of shampoo and what? compound and wax. Yeah, the oh. lazy Susan. Dude, that's my favorite part about this whole thing. <laughs> now, this is a diesel, right? Yeah, it's a diesel pusher, Class A diesel pusher. Ooh, generator is up front. Generator is in the nose. All right, boss man, where's the batteries on this sucker? All right, the house batteries are in the back here. Okay. There are four batteries. So you have the, the two batteries here are for, the, uh, for the motors, and then the four here are for the, uh, for the house. Okay. Top two will start the motor, and the rear four will take care of everything south of the motor. Uh, it'll yeah. start the generators, it'll work the uh, slide outs, it'll have the air conditioners and everything. Well, I'm gonna go get my work bag, and I told you that I had everything I needed in that bag. Okay, well, Let being that you have everything that you need in the bag, I'm gonna get a lounge chair mm -hmm. and then watch you get... <laughs> <laughs> you need a hand, I'm only kidding. He's got the clapper on his uh, fancy truck. <laughs> okay, are you ready? First, floppy hat. Then, we got gloves. And really, the only tool you need is a claw hammer. You're gonna need a bigger one. This hasn't been started in a little bit. <laughs> That's the only tool I brought. First, hit me with that for buying this. <laughs> That's right. And then we'll hit the motor. Oh, this is fun. So first, I'm just gonna see what sort of voltage level we're starting with here. Wow, that's an impressive 10.3, which honestly is better than what I thought it was gonna be. 8.5, that's exactly what I thought it was gonna be. Yeah, all these batteries are completely dead, which is why we just stopped at the battery store to put batteries in here. Picking those batteries up out of the store, out of the shopping cart, pretty sure the reason they were slippery is because they had battery acid film on them. Because ever since then, right here on my hand has been burning, and then I scratched my leg, and now my leg is burning a little bit. Nothing like a little battery acid on you to let you know you're alive. Yes. Oh, Lord have mercy, those things are heavy. Oh, <laughs> hey, I almost forgot. All right, so I brought, I brought you some shirts. Oh, that is awesome. Thank you so much. Do you have boys extra chubby for me? I, as a matter of fact, that's that one. <laughs> now, if I, if I remember right, you said, uh, did you say you are a grandpa? No, no, no take it easy. Okay, my, my, da was... <laughs> my daughter is getting married. Okay, that's what I was wondering. <laughs> but I, no I, kids I yet. I couldn't remember, but this one is the grandpa shirt. You're not a grandpa. We'll throw that one up there. My daughter's getting married next year. Congratulations, by the way. And congratulations. You better not be a mom yet. Extra large, we got a clear prop for you. Oh, that is There's so that awesome. Thank you. I brought one of everything. I'm a big fan of your show. We have a you do what a lot could of, possibly go wrong. You do a lot of good stuff for people. That's why I, I reached out to you. you. You're a good man, Jimmy. No matter what your wife says, that's right. you're a good man. Yeah, yeah. Just don't ask and, her. And she told me to tell you to stop spending the money. She did. <laughs> Is your life insurance paid up? And she usually doesn't ask the other questions. Yeah, yeah. You can go wherever you want as long as you don't bring the kid. So I got a, a large. Now with these shirts, they're what you call athletic fit, which basically means skinny, tall, skinnier. Oh, so I can't fit into it. Well, you can straight or stretch. <laughs> Do I get an autograph? Yeah. <laughs> That'll be three dollars extra. I give you an RV, I don't even get an autograph. It'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. is awesome. Like I said, I, I sincerely really appreciate what you do. Uh, it is, you know, there are very few people with the, with the heart that you have, and I really appreciate what you do. That one, oh yeah, oh yeah, yes. <laughs> okay. I know if I sit on it, it'll cave in, but...
Then all the spider webs are free. Ah, oh, good. Got a rebate policy on those? <laughs> Did the front batteries have anything left on them? No, they were toast too. What's that song? I like big lugs and I cannot lie. You other batteries can't deny when a little cable walks in as far as my rap skills go. <laughs> oh, mosquitoes, it's like we're in the swamp. I would have so died of blood loss if that one would have bit me. We got our batteries in. Here goes the first shot to see how, what happens. Do you have the fire extinguisher? Nah. You're pointed that way, so we're good. <laughs> Whenever it starts up and flames come out and it smokes a bunch. Hey, maybe that smoke will kill some of those mosquitoes. Yeah, we can spray oil on the exhaust. All right, turn the key, put it in, and not making anything. Is there All right, a secret? You, you want to hit the switch to turn the batteries on now? <laughs> OK, there we go. Let's give it a shot now. She's alive! We got lights. Do you have one on here for... Uh, it should say wait to start. Um, should be almost in the center. Park. It goes off pretty quick. Oh, okay. It might be off already. All you right. might have to pump the gas like once or twice once you get... For a diesel? This shit hasn't been started in about a year, year and a half, so... First shot. Don't seem like they charged that much. <laughs> ah. Is this what it was doing? Never did anything. Always ran perfect. Maybe I just need to let it's it. Probably, yeah, it's probably because she sat for so long. <laughs> Put it on the shopping list. Shot it, uh, shot it right up on the first shot. That was good. Yeah. Yeah, well, I'm going to go grab the voltmeter, just make sure it's charging, all that kind of stuff. So let's go see what we got. You know, I probably should have checked the oil and the antifreeze. And... <laughs> well, it's not yeah. like we're in the air. <laughs> we don't have water fall when you're on a... The old batteries were 950 CCAs. Does that say anything on there? Yeah, it's charging. Hey, I don't have any mosquitoes right now. Yeah, I was gonna say, Mother Nature's bug repellent. What's the CCAs on those new batteries, Jimmy? 750. These so are 950. Yeah, so it's a lot less. Just stand here, I'm bug free. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> push up a little bit on this. Well, there's the uh, the brakes. I heard the, the thing pop off. The ABS, yeah. Well, the brakes are like I said, she always ran good. I'm hoping that when we put the, uh, the carriage batteries in, maybe that check engine light will go on. Yeah. What do you want to do about the CCAs? You want to swap those batteries out for the right ones? Once she gets running, you really won't have a problem. 
All right, I'm gonna turn it off. She has all the owner's if manuals it, and everything. See there. if all this stuff starts. So let's do that then, and go replace those house batteries. I mean, and hopefully that check engine light will go out. Let's see if the generator will start and mm -hmm. all the rest of the stuff works. And maybe look at the tires. Okay. Take the covers off of the tires and see if they've got air. Well, there's kind of success, making progress. Expected weather for working on an RV. Oh, that is wet right there. Just sat in it. Fantastic. So the family that we're getting it ready for, husband's name is Carlos, and the wife's name is Lizadia, I think is how you pronounce their name. They are from Puerto Rico. Yeah, they uh, had a place down on the south side of Fort Myers, and when the storm surge came in, their entire community, everything just got washed out. Oh, the water's dripping right into that bag. <gasps> Ah, uh, oh no, the flashlight, everything. And my floppy hat is now a water bucket. I'll take that. Watch out. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing short of Niagara Falls. Yeah, I'm missing one. Ah. There it is. It's a good thing you were able to find your nuts. Woo! Well, hate, hate to be I, missing one. Usually I keep my hands on them every chance, you know, never let those go too far out of sight. When I do work like this, I have my wife hold my nuts. That way my, I don't lose them. Mine just, she just holds on to them all the time, just permanently. Does she break them? Yep. Yep. Well, enough of your silly tomfoolery. Let's go inside and see if the rest Absolutely. of these things will work. Oh. It, usually it'll have the lights that come up on this while it's trying it, it to It will, but the, the chassis has to be on. So anything that's related to the, uh, to the chassis isn't on. Okay. Including the generator. Uh, the horn, I had an air horn in here and the compressor started playing the game. So the horn, the regular horn was like a little Toyota horn. It went meep meep. All right. I know a guy, Steve, he knows RVs. So let me give him a call. I, like I said, if I had to bet something, it would be a relay. I checked all kinds of fuses. I checked all the fuses underneath the center. I checked all the fuses in the back. I checked, it has a set of breakers over here, Jimmy. Like in here. And you check all these. Is, is right down here is the panel. You have a light on your phone? Yeah. I wonder if it's a switch inside the battery tray area. That might be a switch. Like I said, I, I think it's something small. Relay switch, something. Hey, Steve, it's James. Uh, I'm here at the RV, and we got the batteries changed out. It did start up, but it will not go over, like, 1,200 RPM. And the issue with the batteries is the coach switch on the Intellitech battery disconnect will not connect. So give me a call, let me know your thoughts to see, you know, what we can do to diagnose that. All right, bye. Hey Steve, hang on a second. Let me uh, step inside so I can hear you. So we got all the batteries changed, the uh, coach, and the or the chassis batteries and the engine batteries uh it started up pretty easily it you know kind of stuttered a little bit here and there and then the check engine light is still on and it will Good. not let it go above 1200 rpm yeah it's at a b rate for something but uh, when it so when you throttle it up it will go throttle up but only up to 1200. yep it goes up 12 and it just stops right there and you replaced the coach batteries and the chassis batteries, right? Yes, both sets of batteries are changed. And what happens okay. is on the battery disconnect, we go to hit the switch for the coach batteries and it doesn't do anything. Yep. So first you gotta make sure you're getting power to your switch. And if you are getting your power through the switch, see if it's if it's going through the switch and then up to your, your relay. We'll hunt down the fuses first and just double check all those and then the relay for the battery disconnect is that the one that looks like an old ford starter relay in the back next yes. next yeah, to all the batteries yeah look like a battery starter relay all right sir 
Good luck, man. And I'll probably call you back if we uh, okay. make any progress or have any more questions. But what I want to do is I'm going to push it in and, and while I'm clicks. checking to see if we have voltage to it. Okay. Because that'll, if we have voltage to it and it's not coming out of the relay, that'll tell us we got a bad relay. Mm -hmm. If there's no voltage even getting to the relay, we know that it's somewhere from the relay to the switch, here. Yeah. And that'll eliminate half of the system. I have more keys inside. I might as well just wait for him to get out here, so because I don't have any idea what keys. Oh, nice. Oh, what is that critter that just fell out of there? The stick, and then how the heck do you open this thing? The first one should be the hydraulics for the uh, for the lifts. Yeah, yeah. There's yeah. There's nothing here. How do you open up front where the generator is? The generator is pull the hood latch, oh, yeah. and then the nose opens. Does it slide out, or does the it generator does one of those? It's like a shell tilt. It's just to pull out like a regular hood switch. Okay, inside. Yeah, it's on the bottom left. You want me to get it? Yeah, if you could. The front peels back, Jimmy. And then it goes up and out. Lift it up like this. There you go. Yuck. Oh, that's slimy. Not gonna lie. That's pretty gross. Oh. Holy cow, you weren't kidding about the horns. Yeah, man, I used to bless the paint <laughs> off people's cars. That's fantastic. Well, hmm. Nothing. Yeah, she's got no power to it, so. <laughs> that should storage. The next one should be storage. Yeah. Try unlocking it. Yeah, it might be locked. That should be storage. Got a little, uh, yeah, it should be storage. Got a straight screwdriver or anything over there? Uh, in that little orange toolbox in the back of the GMC, there should be uh, a straight. Okay. It's given, you're good. Told you all you needed was a hammer. The inverter's got power. It shows that the inverter has got power in charging, so. It's not? It is. Oh, it is, okay. Yeah. That thing is so loud. Stand by. Go ahead and push the house, the the uh, the one that's not working. Go ahead and push that in. All right. And hold it in. Here, watch. <laughs> I told you this is all we need. Boom, baby. What's up? Hey, you give me crap about not needing a hammer. I told you that's the only thing you need. Woo, that didn't sound good. Hey, you wanna know what fixed it? Modern marvels. Boom. <laughs> Although that sounded like something death right there. Yeah, really. Sounded like there was a tree in there. Yeah. You have the override switch. Yeah, hold on. Uh, don't touch anything. I'm not touching anything. All okay. right. Make sure this one actually has oil in it. Yeah. That makes me feel good. Is that a power switch on? Both power switches are on. Roger. All right, I'm going to try to start the generator. Clear prop. Ooh, that starter is locked up. Clear prop. I think we broke it. Hey, I think the generator broke. It quit the job? 
Yeah, I think that starter or something in there is all kinds of locked yeah, it up. It sounded like there was a tree that a tree branch that got caught up in there. Yeah, I think the starter may have went out to try to start it and then stayed out. But those are on now. <laughs> now it's off. Yeah, I think we I think that time we may have blew the fuse. Hammer time. Told you. All right, now go. Okay. Hold on. All right, stand by. Oh, yeah. We blew this fuse. Wow. Now that is a fuse to blow. I think that's a 175 amp fuse we just blew. See if we test it here. We got power. Then on the other side of this fuse, no bueno. Well, shoot, after all that excitement of getting that thing going, just a little tap, tap, taparoo. <sighs> and that. Is it this whole thing? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. That's it. Wow. Well, do we need a two by four? Use the, yeah, these are just pistons. Yeah, if we can grab like something to wedge it in there. Oh, mud daubers. See, dropping weight already. <laughs> I had the oil change before I left, so, but time-wise, it would have to be done. Yeah. I'm looking A motor. for <laughs> the, that's the computer right there. The throttle, Let's see if the throttle's stuck. Because really what I think it probably is, is a corroded connection. Like I said, Jimmy, I, I, I never lied to you when I was telling you, everything worked on this thing. It's like a boat, unused things go wrong, you know? So here's a fun fact for you. In the Ford manual for diagnosis, they had something called a tap test. Kid you not. You literally went around with a hammer and just tapping things like this connections and stuff like that and then you would know if you tapped on the thing something would like start working and you go oh okay that's where the issue is can really? you not in the ford manuals it was in there called a tap test all right i have my doubts for that but whatever we'll give it a shot yeah, it is what it is i can't believe that, that hammer worked on that relay ha all right you ready back there yes sir Oh, can you hit the thing? Yeah, check engine light came back on. 12 hundo. No, it's not going to work. Whew. Okay. We need to Google. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to start it up and just put it in reverse and forward just to make sure the tranny engages. I'm not going to move it. However tire, you see fit. Yeah. The tire covers are still I have on. a feeling we're going to have to, uh, I have pieces of wood and we can put them underneath the jacks when it comes time to pull this thing out. Mm -hmm. And we might have to jack up the coach and put wood underneath the tires to get her out of here. She seems a little set in the, in the, uh, <laughs> in the dirt there. Oh yeah. Yep. She's ready to go. Nope. Right. No communications or invalid data transfer rate detected on data link between ECM and fuel pump control module at pins 4 and 13. Yep, I need to get in the engine bay again. Where's this connector? That's back here in the engine bay. That was one of them that I was tapping on. The ECMs are right here against... Do you want to unplug it? Maybe we could spray it? Well, that's... Yeah, we were going to unplug this thing. I was going to take it out unhook it all right right here these are the ecms right here unplug plug back in hey now that you did fixed all this stuff maybe i'll keep it yeah <laughs> <laughs> imagine people doing that to you yeah Whew. okay okay i'm all dizzy now <laughs> yeah, take a second. Uh, K 
Okay, I'm gonna uh, turn the key on, maybe start it. Go ahead. Clear bra. Clear bra. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six. Bah, humbug. All right, let's give this old Steve a call. It could be a bad harness or wire, or it could be a bad pump. And it could also, you said, it could have low power to the pump itself, the power supply to the fuel pump's low, or the relay for that could be going bad and causing that. There's a lot of action there you got to do. Well, boys, we came, we saw, we broke stuff, and fix some things with a hammer. There's something deeper in wrong with this thing. Could be a broken wire somewhere. Uh, and I did find one already. Tried to jumper it, fix it, that wasn't it. We're gonna have to come back another day. It's getting late. Honestly, I'm just pooped and my brain is starting not to work right. So, so you yeah, RV sure. experts out there, tell me all the stuff that I uh, was not doing right. Oh, but I will like to say, I found something really cool that I wish cars had, but there's a button right under here that you can just push and it makes the check engine light flash to read the code out. That's the easiest thing in the world for the check engine light. It just tells you what code it is. Boom, right there. How cool is that? All right, boys, let's button this thing up and uh, let's regroup. I know some more better tools I need to bring with me. We gotta bring, get that fuse because we toasted that trying to get the generator to start. And I think next time we do that, we'll start up the engine and have everything running on it instead of just trying that on just the batteries themselves so that it'll hopefully pull from the alternator and stuff as well and not. What can possibly go wrong? Exactly, it'll be fine. Get your merch at savethe310.com. Oh. Yeah. Wow, <laughs> this thing is going to need a the tow saying. truck to get out of here. Well, I have the hydraulic jacks, so uh, we can put the jacks down, backfill it. I say we just strap a chain to it and yank this sucker out. As we go straight into the lake, then it's a houseboat. <laughs> you got some of that orange hand cleaner? Yep, I got it right here for you. Now I love this stuff, but I'll tell you the best thing I've ever discovered in my life, Dawn dish liquid with coffee grinds. Really? The old, yeah, just like old coffee grounds they use for that morning's coffee. Put it in there, a little bit of Dawn dish liquid, rub it in like this, perfect. It is easily the best hand cleaner I've ever found. Ah, yeah, get the rough stuff off. Yes. Good as new. Good as new. Oop, dropped my wedding ring, that's probably not good. What else could possibly go on? That's, that's our motto here at Jimmy's World. 